For a comic book fan in the early 2000s, the X-Men films were a revelation. After the failure of a series of comic book adaptations, Fox's X-Men, helmed by Bryan Singer, was a landmark in the comic book industry. Though the franchise has since died down, with rights to most of the characters being bought by Disney, the X-Men movie franchise was still pivotal for the development of the genre. More than anything, the films were responsible for bringing some of the most formidable mutants we've ever known from the comic book pages to the cinema screen. In this video, we will dive deep into the X-Men films and list the 12 most powerful mutants to ever appear in them. But before we move on, please like the video and subscribe to our channel, as each click goes a long way in enabling us to create more marvelous content. With that out of the way, let's dive right in! Jean Grey Jean Grey has been part of the X-Men series since the very first issue. Thus, fans were hyped when they heard that she would be a major player in the 2000s X-Men. As a mutant with telekinetic and telepathic powers, she was always considered to be one of the most competent members of the team, but really grew into herself after being chosen as the vessel for a cosmic entity known as the Phoenix Force. For the first two films, the franchise mostly shied away from the iconic Phoenix Saga, with the team engaging in battles against Magneto and William Stryker instead. But in the final moments of the second film, just as a flood of water is about to wipe out our heroes, something strange happens. Jean gets off the plane, offering herself as a sacrifice, while using her telekinetic kinetic abilities to contain all of the water. Mere seconds before the water completely envelops Jean, we get a hint of the strange bird-shaped aura surrounding the mutant. It was at that moment that most of us knew that the phoenix had arisen. The entirety of the third film hinges around Jean and her newly gained powers. After being resurrected, Jean obliterates Cyclops with just a kiss. Throughout the franchise, she's known to have a certain penchant for turning people to dust. More than a decade before Thanos made it cool, Jean's long list of victims includes powerhouses like Professor X, Cyclops, Arclight, and Quill, making it pretty evident that she belongs at the top of the food chain. My name is Hank McCoy. Leech. Under the ideal circumstances, there's literally no mutant on the face of the planet that could ever face Leech's power. In a world where superpowers run rampant, the ability to nullify said power is probably the greatest gift of all, and this is Leech's special ability. Though he appears to be just a normal boy, although bald, Leech can generate a field around him that kills the superpowers of any mutant within range. The kid doesn't even need to know that you're approaching him. The moment you breach into his power's radius, all powers go dead. Born in 1988, Leech is one of the few abandoned mutants who could get tested in a safe facility like Worthington Labs without a sadist like Stryker getting his hands on them. Worthington was also able to use Leech's ability to create a cure for mutants on a national scale, which is just further evidence of the massive potential the boy holds. Apocalypse X-Men fans probably expected this was coming. In Sabah Nur, or Apocalypse, has been an integral part of X-Men lore ever since he first appeared in the comics. However, for a long time, we were uncertain whether we'd see the villainous mutant on the big screen, as Apocalypse literally has boundless superhuman abilities, ranging from superhuman strength to molecular control over all aspects of his body. Not exactly easy to adapt to, but in the 2010s, after a soft reboot of the franchise, we were given a small glimpse of a boy in ancient Egypt, moving pyramids with his mind. That was all it took. Fans knew that the famed first mutant had finally made his appearance in the movies. Played by Brendan Petter, the film's version of Apocalypse is different from the one we were familiar with. For instance, he was no longer a cybernetically enhanced giant, but instead, a frail, slight man with a vaguely defined ability that allowed him to manipulate sand. Though Apocalypse's powers are severely nerfed in the films, he still emerges as one of the greatest threats that the X-Men have ever faced. After awakening in the modern era, Apocalypse and his horsemen go on a rampage that totals in entire cities. For much of the film, the X-Men feel helpless in the face of the powerful mutant, even after receiving aid from Mystique and Magneto. In addition to his terrifying physical powers, the monster is also a powerful mental manipulator. Even a master telepath like Professor X was unable to resist the monster's power once he got inside Charles' psyche. Despite being comparatively unpopular among audiences, the film version of Apocalypse is undoubtedly powerful enough to find a place in this list due to his impressive feats. Charles. Professor X Professor X is far too nice for a man with such terrifying abilities. The man could literally turn you into a vegetable in the blink of an eye. Also, since he's the founder of the X-Men, 
No version of the team could even exist without Xavier's grit and perseverance. Though he's often painted as a non-violent activist, seeking harmony for both humans and mutants, the Professor is actually quite adept at holding his own in battle. X-Men First Class depicts the Professor as a much younger man, but even then, Charles was pretty proficient in the use of his telepathic abilities. Throughout the franchise, we've seen the leader of the X-Men perform many feats, such as telepathically pausing people, having fistfights in the astral plane, and almost annihilating mutant kind with the help of Cerebro. In the post-apocalyptic sequel film Logan, the professor ends up losing control over his powers due to old age. This turns the kind professor into a major threat to all sentient life, as a single episode can obliterate entire cities. Magneto Eric Lyncher, the master of magnetism, is just as enigmatic as he is terrifying. Eric's Jewish parents perished during the Holocaust, leading to immense hatred within the boy regarding any kind of discrimination. Of course, as a mutant, Eric belongs to one of the most persecuted communities in the Marvel Universe. The boy was destined to die at Auschwitz, just like his parents, but a sadistic Nazi officer with a fascination for mutants discovered the boy's powers and let him live. Once the war was over, Eric decided to use his powers to avenge his parents. In first class, we see Magneto chasing down every Nazi guard so he can find Shaw, the Nazi officer that tormented him all those years ago. Magneto's tremendous power is evident even in these early battles, and by the end of the movie, he's capable enough to stop a barrage of nuclear missiles with just a gesture. Over the years, Magneto grew much more proficient in using his powers in creative and horrifying ways. It's not just about flinging cars and weapons at people, just like the guy whose blood he used to extract iron, or while planning his escape. However, the true testament to Magneto's abilities comes in The Last Stand, where Magneto ripped the Golden Gate Bridge out of the ground and drop the entire thing on Alcatraz Island. Though the X-Men films have their flaws, Magneto was definitely one of the characters that the franchise got right. The young Magneto is portrayed by Michael Fassbender, while the older version is played by Ian McKellen. Wolverine Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is probably the most memorable part of the X-Men films for most of us. Jackman's performance not only carried a great deal of depth, but also defined the word badass for a whole generation. Wolverine's powers are essentially the same as they were in the comics. Regenerative healing, feral instincts, and razor-sharp claws. His constant appearances in the movies also allowed us to see Logan's growth through the years. Born James Howlett in 1832, Logan is the kind of guy who spent more time on the battlefield than off. X-Men Origins Wolverine shows us that Logan was already a veteran by the time he volunteered for the Weapon X program. After the excruciating procedure, Wolverine became even more of an animal as he was endowed with a nigh-indestructible adamantium skeleton. Combined with his already fearsome regeneration, this made Wolverine invulnerable to almost all attacks. Logan has endured and survived some really messy stuff over the years, like an adamantium bullet in his skull, a nuclear explosion, and even the Phoenix Force. In The Last Stand, when Jean Grey loses control of her powers, Wolverine is the only person who can survive the ensuing onslaught, and even manages to defeat the cosmic entity. Though not as flashy as telepathy or magnetism, Wolverine's powers are still pretty impressive, and this timeless warrior deserves a place on this list. It's quite Cyclops Cyclops, or Scott Summers, is the field leader of the X-Men and is one of the first mutants to be introduced in the franchise. Born with the devastating power of shooting concussive blasts from his eyes, Scott has proven time and time again why he's the one in charge of the mutant team. The guy could obliterate a tank just by winking at it, but these powers do come with a drawback. In his initial appearances, Summers is shown to be completely incapable of controlling his blasts, but he was able to overcome this flaw after years of training with Professor X and the use of Ruby Quartz glasses. Throughout the franchise, Cyclops has battled some of the fiercest mutants ever, including Magneto and Apocalypse. The character, portrayed by James Marsden and Ty Sheridan during the two different timelines, always comes across as someone with a plan, a well-spoken, polite, and natural leader. It's kinda obvious why Jean chose Cyclops over the Canadian Berserker. Scott's only weakness is his inability to hold in his blasts, should the visor be removed, making him vulnerable to sneak attacks.
Rogue. Rogue is the first character we're introduced to in the whole franchise. In the opening scene of the very first X-Men, Rogue accidentally kills her boyfriend as her powers begin to manifest. Being born with the ability to absorb others' life force with just a touch isn't really beneficial for your love life. However, when in battle, Rogue can absorb the powers of any mutant in her vicinity and defeat opponents with their own tricks. Anna Paquin's Rogue is a tormented character, torn between her desire to make bonds with other people and her inability to engage in any physical interaction. She's rescued by Wolverine after an unfortunate pub brawl and eventually finds her way to the X-Men. Rogue's power ends up being one of the core components in the machine Magneto designed to turn normal humans into mutants. It's also this machine that grants Rogue her characteristic white streaked hair. By the last installment of the original trilogy, Rogue decides to volunteer for the cure developed by Worthington Labs, leading us to believe that she lost all her powers. Due to this, we were all in for a surprise when Rogue reappeared in the dystopian future depicted in X-Men Days of Future Past. After Wolverine resets the the timeline, saving all of mutant kind, we find Rogue in X Mansion, finally happy and more than content. Despite her apprehension towards her abilities, Rogue's power can defeat almost any mutant under the right conditions. Colossus. This Russian metalhead is an intimidating figure, to say the least. Covered head to toe in an almost indestructible metallic skin, Peter Rasputin is one of the heaviest hitters in X-Men. He first appeared as a supporting character in X2, but found his groove in the Deadpool films, where he appears as a tritagonist. Peter's abilities began manifesting when he was still an infant, due to the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl, which caused many mutant babies to start exhibiting their powers. After moving to the US, he enrolled in Professor X's school, where he honed his abilities to a much greater extent. His metal form not only grants him invulnerability to most fatal attacks, but also endows him with superhuman strength. The Russian behemoth has traded blows with some real monsters, like Juggernaut and Angel Dust. A single punch from Colossus probably feels more like a wrecking ball. It's safe to say that we're lucky that Colossus is a polite, considerate man, though that might change if he keeps hanging out with Deadpool so much. We're extremely eager for his next appearance, Deadpool 3, where the CGI character will be voiced mostly by Stefan Kepesik. In earlier films, he was portrayed by actor Daniel Kudmore. Quicksilver. If we asked you to pick your favorite sequence from all the X-Men films, it would probably be the Quicksilver sequences from the newer trilogy. The sheer spectacle of watching a man rush through time and space while the world around him stands still is probably enough to justify his presence on this list. But Quicksilver's abilities are much more than just some cool visual effects. As we've seen him take down squads of armed guards in mere seconds, Quicksilver moves at supersonic speed that's too great for a normal human to even perceive. Imagine fighting a guy that you can't even trace with your naked eye. On top of his agility, Quicksilver also has a heightened sense of perception, which augments his reaction time to such a degree that he can catch bullets in midair. Also, since he moves faster than sound, his punches are more akin to missiles finding their way to your jaw. Over time, he's grown into an expert combatant, capable of facing off against Apocalypse himself. The powers also increase his body's metabolism, which means that he can break down food much faster than a normal human. Actor Evan Peters plays Quicksilver with a characteristic impatience that's quite justified for a man who can move faster than most people can think. Go get her, Tiger. Negasonic Teenage Warhead Though the name is still a bit iffy, we understand why Ellie Femister chooses to call herself a warhead. After all, the ability to generate atomic energy and burst from one's body does make them a weapon of mass destruction in some ways. First, we meet Negasonic in the Deadpool movies, where the cynical teenager reluctantly agrees to accompany the Merc with a mouth. A single well-placed blast from Negasonic was enough to defeat Angel Dust, a foe that even Colossus struggled against. In the sequel, we're treated with even more blatant displays of Negasonic's power, and see her stand her ground against the Juggernaut. Though she's still young with plenty of room to grow, it's evident that Negasonic has immense potential, and we can't wait to to see her again in the upcoming Deadpool 3. Negasonic Teenage Warhead is portrayed by Brianna Hildebrand in the films. Storm. The last inclusion on this list has to be Storm. The ability to control the weather is undeniably godlike and can be used in a host of creative ways. Aurora Monroe has been a mainstay of the franchise ever since she appeared in the first X-Men and has emerged as one of the team's most reliable members. The rebooted trilogy tells us that Aurora grew up on the streets of Cairo, where her abilities garnered the attention of the reincarnated Apocalypse. While serving as a horseman under Apocalypse, Storm received even greater power but eventually returned to our hero's side. This was just a 
glimpse of Aurora's true strength, and we would see her indulge in battle many more times while with the X-Men. Throughout the franchise, Storm has taken on some extremely fearsome foes, and was able to defeat opponents like Psylocke, Callisto, and even the dreaded Sentinels. Her weather manipulation can create extreme weather conditions, generate lightning bolts, and siphon electricity. Halle Berry played the character in the original films, while Alexander Shipp portrayed the younger Storm from the newer installments. Marvelous Verdict This list is a testament to what makes the X-Men so beloved. These diverse powers and skills clearly showcase why the superhero team is so feared by all those wrong mutants. But it also allows us to see why humans are so afraid of mutants in the first place. Some of the powers we mentioned above have the potential to completely take over the planet, and it's only natural that conflicts would arise. However, we're certain that as long as the X-Men keep fighting the good fight, Xavier's dream of harmony between humans and mutants will never be too distant. That's it for today, but do let us know in the comments if we missed out on a character you'd like to see on this list. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel for more marvelous content. Well then, goodbye, and we'll see you all next time.